Hey, it's Matt. I'm back with another transparent watercolor. This is a 18 by 24 inch painting of different birds from the Everglades. I got photos of the, for reference for these on a couple of different trips down to the Everglades. Um, some with my brother and uh, another one with my family. It's a great place to get uh, close-up shots of birds that you uh, can't get very close to here in Michigan or you just can't find in Michigan. So this has a lot of different species. I've got some osprey, great egret, purple gallinule, um, double-crested cormorant, brown pelican, yellow-throated warbler, great blue heron, sandhill crane, a palm warbler, yellow-crowned night heron, and uh, Trying to find a composition that would work with these that would be exciting and uh, colorful was uh, took a lot of time just figuring out what I wanted to do with uh, the composition of this one. Uh, in the end, I tried to get something that was uh, kind of exploding off the page. At least that was what I was hoping for. So after I got the uh, sketches transferred to the paper, I went about just washing in the lightest local colors of uh, the different parts of the birds. And a lot of this was done with the number six round brush. Um, and I, did the, I tended to work in the areas of largest color first, trying to get the page covered, and then doing similar colors after that so I could uh, just have the main paints mixed up. And you can see that for the larger areas, I worked from uh, uh, well palettes, and then for final work in the end, I switched over to using the butcher's tray almost exclusively. And this was done just glazing in many, many layers of color once I had the main ones established. And my goal was to bring about the whole page kind of at an even level of detail. And uh, with so much going on that just meant picking away at different <laughs> different areas and so I'd get a, a nice red color and I'd hit all those red areas and then work for some greens or blues whatever it happened to be. I'm just trying to slowly bring everything at about an even level of detail. One of the other complications is that with transparent watercolor when you see white it's the white of the page. So you typically want to keep your paint your lightest colors first and then bring the darks in because if you have the darks on the page first and you put in some wet washes for the light stuff it has a tendency to bleed so i did have to do a little bit more work on say the white egrets and the uh, whites on the um, herons and the sandhill cranes earlier on and then bring about the darks later for the uh, really uh, intense colors on the gallinules and the cormorants. And a lot of the time of this was, it took a lot of time just figuring out what to do with the composition of the, the painting. I wanted to kind of have this um, excited colors of the uh, rainbow tones from blues to greens and uh, purples of the gallinules as kind of a black background element and then have these other things kind of pushing outward from that. Um, so it, it took me a while to find something that would balance and uh, still make sense. And I also wanted to kind of have the symmetry of the main birds on it and and something that would the symmetry would relax the eye but at the same time have it very excited with the movement of the beaks um, kind of pulling your eye around the page to different portions of it and so composing this one was kind of a, kind of a bear I had a lot that were almost there and didn't quite work and I had other you know kind of doodles I did in Photoshop that just didn't work at all so um, in the end, I thought this one was a good balance of dynamic and yet still balanced. At this point, I pretty much switched over to the uh, butcher's tray for most of the painting. Um, for some of the larger areas on the gallinules, I went back to the wells. Um, and that allowed me to just mix up a color and, and be consistent with that throughout the birds. 
You can see that at this point I would switch over for some of the painting to a number two round brush. That allowed me to get in some more of the details as I got into the smaller areas. Painting the gallinules was uh, challenging but fun to keep the intensity of the color and yet still have it rounded out and you know I, I went from for the darkest parts I had some uh, really dark mixes of dioxazine um, purples and then bringing the, in some of the ultramarine blues and uh, some phthalo blues too to knock it back and then rounding that up to moving more towards just the ultramarines and then to the thalos and then to the greens eventually and uh, kind of getting the balance as you went through that progression of colors was uh, a little difficult because the the thalos is phthalo paints are staining paints whereas the ultramarine is more of a sedimentary paint so keeping that looking right and grabbing the paper at the right rate um, you had to do it in many layers and kind of ease into it to have it really work at times I'd rotate the page around so it was a little bit easier for me to reach the parts of the painting to get to the detail and other times I even flipped the painting over um, it's always easiest to kind of work uh, you know, not be leaning over the whole painting to get to the areas you need. My photo reference for these little yellow-throated warblers were substandard, but uh, I was able to get a decent uh, look from them. In, in my reference, they were shot through a window and uh, they weren't all that close, so they were a little bit fuzzy, so I had to kind of imagine some of the detail that was in there by using other reference material. Whereas the rest of the, the birds I had, you know, excellent photos of that I had gotten over the years. Paintings like these just take an extraordinarily large amount of time because every square inch is detail on these. There's no real, you know, it's not like you have a big fuzzy background for the sky that you kind of can wash in quickly and is a little less important and you can uh, have it fade off. With this, it's, it's pretty much all business all the time. And so these, these just take forever to do. You know, it'd be fairly easy to just, you know, take these images from other paintings in Photoshop and snip them out and make a collage out of them. But I, the, real, the real art in this, for me at least, is having it all on one page and having, um, you know, getting it all painted correctly. Here you can see I actually flipped the page, so I'm painting from the top of it now. <laughs> but uh, that allowed me to reach these little details of the uh, osprey and things that otherwise I'd be leaning all over the page for. And I'd say the most fun of this painting, other than the painting those rainbow kind of tones on these gallinules was a lot of fun but once you had one done kind of all the others were the same basic technique I'd say the eyes on the cormorant were just so much fun to paint because it was an overcast day when I got those photos at Anhanka Trail in the Everglades and it had this beautiful rim of light from the horizon on it and trying to capture that um, on the on the eyes of the cormorant was just fun and they they do have a just a gorgeous blue green eye that is you know i know they're common birds and they're some people are annoyed by cormorants but you know 
Nothing's prettier than those eyes. They're like little jewels. And here the intensity on the Galen Yule is starting to pick up where I wanted it to be, where you can really see the the dark purpley colors and blue colors kind of mixing up to that light blue green on the back and boy they're beautiful birds. Pretty much toward the end of the painting, I was using a number two brush, or in some cases a 10 watt brush to get tiny little details of the the hairs and the little uh, you know creases around the eyes and little feathers around the uh, around the heads and nostrils and things like that. So it ended up being picking away at all these tiny details late in the painting. The other thing was trying to get the little shading behind the beaks so there was a good overlapping of the, the shapes. So it looked, I don't want it to be a flat collage, I want it to look a little like they're kind of in one environment, but uh, um, just having it make logical sense on the page, you know, as far as shading was, uh, was a definite goal. So there you go, an 18 by 24 inch transparent watercolor of Birds of the Everglades. Thanks for watching. If you get a chance, uh, have a peek at the blog or the website.